Who are you? 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 was at uh, Memorial Union. I've heard about, I've heard like weird stories about him from uh, my friends before, but the first time I saw him he was just like sitting there chilling on, this, on a couch, just by himself, smiling. That dude looked like the happiest person alive. I just went up to him and I said hi and I asked him if I could get a picture from him. And yeah, that's all. Before I embarked on this documentary, that was all I knew about Tunnel Bob, hearsay from a friend who ran into him for a few seconds to take a picture. Little did I know this short story would bring me down quite the rabbit hole. Our tale begins in the 1970s. While other men were trudging through Viet Cong tunnels overseas, a curious young man at the University of Michigan decided to go spelunking underneath his own soil. In fact, he went underground so much that the security guard at his dorm took notice and gave him the famous Tunnel Bob moniker we all know him by today. After his time in college, Tunnel Bob traveled over to Madison where he would primarily live for the rest of his life. <clears throat> One of the reasons why he would stay is because of a deal he made with an engineer at the university hospital. As long as he behaved himself, he could volunteer in the tunnels for three hours a day. When he was asked what he did during this time, here's what he had to say. Well, the first hour I walks around a bit, the second hour I cleans up some, and the third hour, well, that's just for me. Unfortunately, this wouldn't last forever, and the university would have a falling out with Tunnel Bob. Who are you? You see, like all of us, Bob has a darker side. After doing some research, I discovered some things I wish I didn't know about him. I don't think Bob is a bad man, but definitely a misunderstood one. Regardless, these controversies have turned Bob into somewhat of a sideshow attraction, making him into more of a myth than a man. Before starting this project, one of my misconceptions was that he lives in the tunnels, which according to him, if you did, you would end up dead. The tunnels themselves go up to 120 degrees Fahrenheit and are far too loud to provide a decent slumber. I got most of this information from a 2015 article in the Badger Herald. And besides a rap video and a post on a random forum 15 years ago, that was all the information we had about Tunnel Bob. Until now. Hey, are you Tunnel Bob? Yeah. Hi, my name is Sean. It's really a pleasure to meet you. Yeah. I'm actually filming a documentary on you for my class right yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Just wanted to like ask you a few questions. Like, what's yeah, your... I'll, I'll See you later, Bob. Okay. So, uh, what are some of your favorite movies? Well, there's a few of them. Yeah. I can't. I can't name them all. Can't name them. Yeah. What about any like songs you've been listening to lately? Oh, there are some songs out. Yeah. yeah. yeah a lot of songs out. Yeah. At first, I felt like I was getting nowhere with Tunnel Bob. After all, this was unscripted, and I had to think of questions off the top of my head. So I decided to talk to him about what he knew best: the tunnels. Charter, St Charter Street Heat. Yeah. yeah. Across that, from that. That hatch uh, right by the railroad tracks? Yep. Yeah. Was yeah. standing open that night? Yep. yep. Well, it's yeah. standing open right now. I was just in there about a half hour ago. Oh, nice, nice. I walked toward the charter plant, but there's hardly any lights working in that that one walking, going toward the charter plant. They're, they're dim, too. Yeah. You climb down that ladder and then into that round, Thing that goes across the to the plant yeah. with the grating on the floor. Yep. Yep. I was yeah. in. I was in. Fun. I was in there to, today, just a little bit. I can see why you like it so much. And I turned on the lights, but uh, the lights in that round tunnel 
there's hardly any lights working. Yeah, yeah, I've heard that uh, you've changed the light bulbs in the tunnels. Do you still do that? Or? I, I, I would if I could, but uh, they have those tube lights down. And they don't leave spares down there. It'd be nice if they did. Is there a little puddle of water there too? Uh, I think so, yeah. Because I thought I stepped in a puddle of water when I was at that door. Yeah. And then there was a hatch and it was padlocked. Yep. Yeah. I know the tunnels really well. Yeah. Well, I don't know uh, if I can ask anything else here. I don't really have anything off the top of my head, but would you mind if my friend is a picture of us? I don't mind. All right, thank you very much. After all the work I've done for this video, that moment seemed like the climax of my endeavors. I wasn't even sure if I was going to get an interview from one of his associates, let alone the man himself. And to be honest, I didn't really learn anything. He wasn't willing to share any details about his personal life, let alone some of the things he enjoys outside tunnels but I think that this is what makes the character of Tunnel Bob so interesting. Like Bob's fascination with the tunnels, my fascination with him lies within the mystery of it all. There is a certain level of morbid curiosity that comes along with being infamous where you're inclined to ponder the method behind the madness. For all I know, Bob is just a guy that likes tunnels and attempting to fill in the gaps of why is the reason why he piqued my interest in the first place. While our tales of Tunnel Bob are whimsical and idiosyncratic, the reality is that the population of Madison's perception of this concept comes from a place of privilege and misunderstanding. Bob is fortunate enough to be in a place where he only explores the tunnels out of curiosity, but for many, it is a matter of survival. The critically acclaimed documentary Dark Days follows a group of people actually living in the tunnels of the New York subway system, and while their circumstances are different, the underlying similarity that I found are that the tunnels provide a sound escape for individuals wronged by society. Perhaps we are what drove Bob underground, the tunnels providing a refuge where you could tune out the droning monotony of everyday life. In essence, some things are better left unsaid, so stop fearing what you don't understand. Who are you?